Their life matters. Monique Janae Decker. Their life matters. Jessica Ubrod. Their life matters. Stephanie Lejean Hill. Their life matters. Crystal Lee Miley Harris. Their life matters. Tanisha Anderson. Her life matters. Yvette Smith. Her life matters. Miriam Carey. Her life matters. Shelly Fred. Her life matters. Tanisha Harris. Her life matters. Melissa Williams. Her life matters. Alicia Thomas. Their life matters. Chantel Davis. Their life matters. Rakia Boyd. Their life matters. Therese Francis. Their life matters. Ayana Stanley Jones. Their life matters. Sarika Wilson. Their life matters. Catherine Johnson. Their life matters. Alberta Spruill. Their life matters. Kendra James. Their life matters. Helen Adams. Their life matters. And Karen Jenks. Their life matters. And there's so many names that's not on there. Erica. We are out here today to lift up the names of black women, black children, and black trans women as well. Um, when it comes to the issue of police terrorism, police brutality, uh, police murder, a lot of times um, in the media and in our public spaces, we hear the dialogues around um, black men that are being killed by uh, men more often than we do women. And we know that it is not purposely done, but it's because we are built upon a patriarchal system that a lot of times um, the women, children, and the transgender lives are left out of the conversation. So today our coalition is coming together to lift up those names, to honor them, to let them know that we hear them, that we're here, that we support them, not support them in the manner of them being here, but support them in the manner of um, knowing that their lives are important and that they matter to us and as a people, that they are not and they will not be. We're here today because uh, even though there's been such a major outcry against the police, uh, the racist police murder of black people throughout this country, the women still tend to be left out of that conversation. The conversation tends to focus only on the men who are affected by this, and there are a lot of men who are affected by this, but it's not just men, it's women also, cis women, trans women, gender queer people. And so we're here specifically to, to speak their names and to call attention to the fact that this is everyone's issue. This is a black person's issue, not just a black man's issue, and it's everyone's issue too. It affects all of us, and we're here to assert that and to, and to redirect the focus on that. My niece, um, Odyssey Golden Brown, is four years old, and I have four sisters, Octoria, Sierra, Oriana, um, Samira, so all of them could have been Ayanna Jones, Kia Boyd, and all the other females that have been slain by police officers, and when is like, when is enough is enough. We're here as part of a national day uh, to raise the increasing number of victims of police brutality and domestic abuse and violence who are women and trans people and LGBTQ who are not often the names that you hear raised um, by the media or in the media. goes on and on and on and on forever. I was sharing with one of my sisters today how like it was just a little emotional for me because um, just seeing the names, you know, just seeing the list of names out there is extremely uh, traumatizing, extremely traumatic, and it's kind of a hard pill to swallow when we think about lives that have been lost, when we think about those who have been gone unheard. When we think about those names of people that we just don't know about, um, also realizing that a transgender man or woman is killed every three hours in this country, and that a black man is killed every 28 hours in this country, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. But when you see those names, you kind of understand why uh, those statistics are that which they are. But so you know, like the, the list today are composed of black and brown people. Um, there's a lot of Latinos that is on that list as well, but 95% of it is black men, um, not black men, but black boys, black girls, black women. And um, we have a list of trans Hands up! Fight back! Hands up! Fight back! Hands up! Fight back! Hands up! Fight back! And I ask us to do hands up, fight back, rather than hands up, don't shoot, because quite
quite frankly, I think that is dead. They have already told us we can have our hands up. They have already told us we can wear a suit. They have already told us it doesn't matter how respectable we are, they're gonna shoot us anyway. They have already told us it doesn't matter if you're a black girl, seven years old, sleeping on your grandmother's couch, we will shoot you. They have already told us they don't care if you're just chilling with your friends and I'm a cop and I decide to, I want to shoot into the crowd. They have already made that quite clear that no matter what decisions we make, they are going to do whatever we want. Help us. You call yourself a queer ally and stop calling the pigs. The pigs will never be about us. The pigs will never be for us. I'm going to be real selfish real quick and talk about something that happened on March 19th up in Northwest Philly. An event that, you know, has 10 people now called the Philly 10. You know, whatever. People went into a, a police conversation and got rowdy. Press say that it was because of the people. People say it was because of the cops. I can state that it was literally because... One specific cop, Civil Affairs Officer Joseph O'Brien, behind me yelled, I'm getting Morgan. Some of you might know who Morgan is. Morgan is one of the amazing queer black women in this movement. Her and her family have worked so hard and so harder than any other family I know of in this movement. Morgan, Megan, Mallory, Miss Malachi. Malachi, her here as well, are some of the strongest women I've ever met in my entire life. And I am proud to say I was, the, I was one of the women who got arrested that night alongside those three sisters. But unfortunately, at the roundhouse that night on 7th and Race, I had to play, play closeted, you know? I was wearing clothes that weren't exactly feminine, so I could play the mail card. I could pull out my driver's license that some bullshit state says that I am a boy or what have you. Fuck that, fuck them, whatever their paperwork needs to be that. But what I'm saying is while being put through, while I have yet to be considered guilty or anything like that, one of, one of the correctional officers, a black man, told me that I better not end up in prison because I would be raped because of my hair. This is how they treat the innocent. This is how they treat the people who are, have not been claimed guilty yet by the state and the legal system that they support. So I'm going to get off now, but I just want to make sure that we're raising the names of Ms. Ian Morse, of, oh God, I forget her name now, um, Jennifer Wall, the Filipino woman who was killed by a Marine when he found out that she was trans. He drowned her in a toilet in a hotel. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. I say. 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 I realize that most of the cases, part of the, uh, the problem is that as a priority, their lives is such a low priority that a lot of the cases have been left unresolved. They have not even cared to find the killers, not even uh, put, um, what do you call it, charges on them, but go even just find to find them. That. Uh, really large percentage of the deaths of transgender individuals mm -hmm. have been incredibly violent. They've been found in parts, they've been stabbed, they've been burned, they've been tied to ropes and thrown in rivers. Right. Not only by the police, but by the people that are supposed to love them. I. As a queer brown male who often people per uh, perceive as effeminate, I understand how hard it is to enter spaces and to feel safe and predominantly white male spaces. So I can only imagine 
how the transgendered women in my life and transgendered men who I met, how they dealt. I remember a transgendered woman from my community college who was soft-spoken, was such a beautiful person, was very shy, but she had so much to give. And um, I don't know where she is right now. I wish that uh, she could see that we're doing this so that she could feel a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more proud and a little bit more encouraged um, to express who she is. And I, I have a list of 700 individuals um, and I'm going to keep talking. Uh, there are police here, so I would feel safer if some people stayed with me. I understand that people have to go, but this is the least that I can do so that I know that people will know their names. It's time to keep the energy that we created, that we, that we built for two and a half hours, keep the energy closed amongst us all. The energy of the lives that we named, that we spoke, that we honored in this space, this ground that we held together for the last few hours. Let's keep that energy close amongst the circle right now. We honored lives tonight. That's what we did. We spoke their names. Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding I'm so, finding many, so many different mentalities. Different mentality. It, 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 it seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, so so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this. I think that, I think that we all have, we a, all have a purpose in life. And mine's and mine's is going to take on a task that most that most of uh, back away from. Back away from. That impossible. That impossible. So people, people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see. Anything. I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality, mentality. There are there are different mentalities, but just like just there's like different there's different ways to teach people how to there's different, there's different, different ways to communicate people. It's different. It's different ways to communicate people in their different mentalities. So I do. So I do see hope. hope. I see hope, and that's all coming together and understanding each other and learning to respect.